Hello everyone, I'm Ola and this is Coding is for Girls. Today, as promised, I will show you example solution for one of the challenges I gave you in one of my previous videos. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to look at the link in the description below. First, let's remind what the first challenge was all about. We wanted a program that will first ask you to provide number of inches, then wait for you to type the number and then click enter, take this value and convert it into centimeters, and finally print answer number of inches is the number of centimeters, where you replace number and result with the calculated values. For example, for 2 inches we would have 2 inches is 5.08 centimeters. And to remind you, bonus points were for handling errors and incorrect types. For example, if the user typed some text, for example the name Ola, instead of the number. Ok, let's start to code. I create a file called units.py and save it on my desktop. First we need to print the message asking user to provide the number of inches and then store it somewhere. For example in a variable inches. Ok, so let's type. Inches equals input. Hopefully you remember that input is a Python function that allows reading what user types and storing the value if we want. If you don't know what it's all about, make sure to check my previous video Python basics, user input and dealing with errors. Then we type provide number of inches. Next thing we would like to calculate is how many centimeters the given number of inches equals to. One inch is 2.54 centimeter, so we have to multiply a number we got from the user by 2.54. So we will print the result as inches plus the text inches is, then plus, and the value in variable inches multiplied by 2.54 and then text centimeters. Ok, let's try to run our program in console. So we type python3 units.py. There is an error. But why? Well, the error is a type error saying that we cannot multiply sequence by non-int of type float. As I told you in one of my previous video, input function in Python return text, not number. So we need to make sure that we change somehow the text containing the number into the real number in Python. And we can do that by using Python function named float and take this number and then multiply it by 2.54. Let's do this right now. We will wrap variable inches into float function like this. Now let's save file and run it in console. Oh no, now we cannot display the value because we need text. This is so annoying. Although we successfully converted our user input into a number and made all the calculations to get number of centimeters, now if we want to display it in print function, we expect to have text. So we need to take the calculated value and change it into text by using Python function named str. Ok, so let's wrap float inches multiple 2.54 with str function. Now let's save the file and run it in console. We type python3 units.py. Now it worked. But let's make our code a little bit nicer, more beautiful and more readable, because it's a little bit ugly now. Let's take this bit, float inches multiple 2.54, and store it in a variable, so the code is more readable. Let's call the variable cm from centimeters. Ok, that's better, and it still works nicely. What we did is separating the calculation of number of centimeters from displaying that. But we can go one step further and use Python building method called format. I know, I haven't talked about it yet, but I cannot resist introducing something new. 
Let's take a quick look at the Python documentation about this method. It says that format performs a string formatting operation. The string on which this method is called can contain literal text or replacement field delimiter by curly braces. Each replacement field contains either the numeric index of a positional argument or the name of the keyword argument, returns a copy of the string where each replacement field is replaced with the string value of the corresponding argument. Okay, that was a little bit confusing, even for me, and I know how format method works. But in the end, it means that we have a text with some kind of placeholders here and there, and then we provide the values for these placeholders at the very end, and we use curly brackets to mark the places we want to put some values on our variables. I like to think about format method like having some kind of template. For example, if I write an invitation, or the letter I want to send to many people, I have pretty much the same text and I just want to put a different address and name to each invitation. And the name and address are these placeholders, these curly brackets in format, and the text of the invitation is the text we are running the format with. So when we use format method, we first write the text and mark all the places where we want to inject the value, our placeholders with the curly brackets, and then use dot format and in parentheses we provide all the arguments, all the variables we want to put into our placeholders. Okay, let's see it in action. Let's change print in our program. First, we want to have a number of inches. This will need a placeholder. So we type curly brackets and then we type inches is and we want to display number of centimeter so we will need another placeholder. Finally, we add centimeters. Then we take our whole text and after it add dot and type format. That means we call method format on this text. Now, in parentheses, we provide inches and centimeters variables, remembering about correct order. Have you noticed that we no longer need to transform a variable that stores centimeters to text using str method. Format method is smart enough to do it for us, so we don't need to remember about it every single time. Let's make our code even prettier. We can take the inner part in print and store it in the separate variable, so it's even more readable. Let's call it message. And remember about naming your variables in a meaningful way. This will expose to every person who read your code what was the intent of the code, and it makes it much, much easier to read. Okay, but the question is, can we make our code even nicer? Well, of course we can. Let's take this line. Centimeters equals float inches multiple 2.54 and create a nice reusable functions out of that. Well, you can ask why we actually need function here. The code is good enough, it works, so why we would we like to do that? Imagine that we have two different files that want to do the very same thing, but slightly different. Let's create a file named units.pl.py and let's save it in the same folder. I'm saving it on desktop. This program will do pretty much the same, but instead of displaying all messages in English, we will use Polish. I will type input with Polish messages, like podaj ilość cali, and then if I would like to calculate the number, I would need to copy the whole thing again like this, changing only the text. But this is not that nice. And in the case we have 100 different files with 100 different languages, that does pretty much the same, and we somehow made a mistake and instead of multiplying by 2.54, we would multiply by 2.56, and we realize that there is an error, we would need to go to every single file out of 100 and fix it. This is not good, and computer scientists don't like to repeat themselves. But we can be smarter, we can create a separate file, we can call it unitfunctions.py and move the code that calculates the value and make the function out of that and reuse that in every single file we would like to have, so in the units.py and units.pl.py. 
Let's create the file unit functions.py then and save it on desktop. Inside we will define the function. Let's call it inches to centimeters and we want it to return the calculation. Now when we go back to units.pl.py file, instead of centimeter variable in print, we will call the created function with the inches we get from the user. Let's save and run it in console. Uh-oh. When we run it, the program breaks saying that the function is not defined. And this is true because in this file, units.pl.py, there is no function called inches to centimeters. But the thing is that Python allows you to share the code between files. Yes, we can let Python know to look into unit functions.py file and take the function which is defined. We do that by using construction from name of the file we want to import something, import and then the name of the thing we want to import. So in our scenario we will have from unit functions import inches to centimeters. Where unit functions is the name of the file we are importing our function from and please note that we are not typing .py extension here at all. Typically when we use from import construction we place it at the very beginning of the file. So let's do it here. So we are typing from unit functions import inches to centimeters. We can also go back to our units file and use very same from import construction to use the same function here. This way we can have different programs that shares the same thing. Isn't it awesome? Now let's see if it works. Let's go to the console and run python3 units.pl.py. It works. The same is with units. But what if we move our unit functions file to some other folder? For example, we will call it functions. I will create a folder in console. So in a desktop, I will do mkdir functions. And now I will move the file by typing mv unit functions functions. So I moved unit functions file to functions subfolder. Now when we try to run the program we get new error, which is no model named unit functions. So how we can access that now? Well, Python obviously has a way to do that and it allows that by adding the name of the folder before the name of the file and connect it all with dot. So in our scenario we will have from functions dot unit functions import inches to centimeters. Let's fix our files then. Now when we run it again, everything works. Of course, using from import structure is more complicated when you have the file that is further away in some other folder, but I won't cover it today because that's a topic for a separate video. But you should be very proud of yourself because you just learn how to share your code between different files and different programs. And this is really awesome. Now let's make our program even nicer. Remember in the video where I talked about all the challenges, I told you that it would be really nice, and this is for bonus points, to make sure that program does not crash when you provide the value that is not the number. For example, if we run the program and Instead of typing the number, we will type hola. First, let's look how our program behaves when we do that now. So we go to the console and type python3 units.py and now we type hola and click enter. We get a value error. I hope you remember my video about handling errors and exceptions. And we will use now try except clause we learned in the video and make sure that we display some very nice message to user when the error occurs. Let's open our unit file and add try except clause. These two lines will be in a block now after try. Then we type accept and the name of the error we want to handle. In this scenario it's value error. And then in this block we specify what we want to display to the user when they made a mistake. For example message, it is not a correct number. Let's try it now in the console. Let's type hola and it looks very nice now. Okay, so time for last improvement. 
If we want to have the same try except clause also in the Polish version, we would need to add all the code and messages around it. And once again, it looks very similar. So is there a way to extract it into function that we can use in both scenarios? If we would compare what's the difference between Polish and English version, we would realize that the only difference is the messages, once in English and once in Polish. So let's try to extract the separate function that we can use in both files. We will open our unit functions file and we will copy paste whole thing from units, from reading the input to printing the error message. We want it as a function, so we need to type that and give it a name, for example, convert inches. And all the code that we copy pasted should be indented, so it is inside of this function. Now, when we look here, only these parts provide number of inches, inches is something centimeters and it is not the correct number, should be different depending on the language we are using. So let's change them into variables that we provide when running this function. We can call it prompt message, message and error message and replace text with them like this. Now let's go back to units.py and import this function. We can import next thing in the same from import statement by doing it after the comma. Now, instead of this whole code, we will simply call the function which is defined in the unit functions file, like this. Convert inches and then in parentheses we will provide three arguments. First was message prompt, which is provide number of inches, then message, number of inches is number of centimeters, and finally, error message. In this scenario, it is not the correct number. Let's see if it works. Let's go to the console and type python 3 units.py. Yes, it does. Now it's time to change, or as computer scientists say, refactor the units.pl file. We replace the code with convert inches and provide all three messages in Polish. So, podaj ilość cali, Ilość cali to ilość centimetrów and to nie jest numer. Yay, it works! You extracted the code and now you can create any number of files with different languages and reuse that simply by providing different messages in different languages. Isn't that amazing? Last small thing in our files is that we no longer use inches to centimeters explicitly in units and units PL files. It is used but only inside convert inches, which is in the same file as inches to centimeters. So the import of inches to centimeters is not needed anymore and we can remove it from units and units PL files. I hope you had fun watching how I try to implement the challenge and that you enjoy looking how I try step by step improve my code. As I already mentioned, it's called refactoring and it's something that programmers are doing every day. Refactoring is about making code more robust, more readable and containing less errors. There is still the second challenge, so if you haven't done it yet, hurry up. I placed the link to the video where I talked about both challenges in the description below, so make sure to check it out. I hope that you had fun today and you learned something new. I know it is kind of sneaky to add new things like format method and importing stuff, but I really couldn't resist showing you something new. But obviously it was not needed to write the program, so I hope that you will forgive me. Let me know in the comments what was the hardest part of the challenge and don't forget about second challenge. I will post the video with the example solution very, very soon. So if you want to learn how to program with me, make sure to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Have a lovely day and see you!